All right. Welcome to another live coverage event All with right. uh, Talking in Stations. I am Matt Earl. I'm here with Sully, who, uh, if he's not there now, will be around. Are you there? I'm here, surely. I'm just going to be on um, audio mute because I'm moving around, getting things set up, ready for this long sitting session. <laughs> yes, make yourself comfortable. Is Tiberius still here with us? He might have actually left already. Okay, so we're just finishing up the Sunday show podcast version of Talking in Stations, which will be out later. And uh, right now we're looking at uh, tactics already being employed. They're putting up an entire bubble around this keep star that for defensive purposes, that is uh, Pappy that's doing that. They're the blue on the field. And it looks like they're just putting one after another. They intend to completely insulate this keep star. Very interesting. Wow, we're going to have a big fight for you today. This is going to go for hours, at least five hours, uh, possibly as much as 10 or 12. Depends on what happens here. Again, these fights can end quickly or they can drag on forever. And they get exciting near the end sometimes uh, as, as the countdown uh, for the structure of the Keep Star continues to approach zero. We're seeing uh, thousands and thousands of players uh, on either side collide over the health of this Keep Star. I want to tell you that uh, Talking in Stations had a great show yesterday with uh, Tiberius talking I want to tell with you that really kind of an all-star cast of wormhole players. If you're interested in wormholes, if you want to know more about them, the Anoikis Connection, you can catch that on YouTube on Talking in Stations. So that is uh, youtube.com slash Talking in Stations. Uh, look for the wormhole playlist. You can find them there in order of uh, production. That was episode three. And uh, he is back to making episodes uh, on the regular. Yep, we have sound and video now. Uh, confirm that, please, chat. And uh, pretty sure we turned on our sound and are ready to go. Sully's going to be doing a lot of... Uh, work today he's going to be holding up the stream as usual he does great stuff thank you guys for giving me feedback there and uh, i will be in and out unfortunately today i have a prior commitment i uh, can't take that much time <laughs> uh, again today so i'll be back in a few hours but i'm going to just hang out with you guys beginning here to uh, introduce all this let's get you up to speed there's been a ton happening over the last week uh, and I don't think we've ever seen anything at this scale in EVE Online's history. So you are witnessing history. Uh, the, the great wars that happened in the past happened over months, like this war has. But there might have been two or three maybe catastrophic fights that kind of dictated who was going to win that war. So... Uh, we've had multiples of those already. So it's not like it used to be in EVE Online 2009 through 2013. Uh, then you don't have the frequency either of the scale that we have here. In other words, we've never had big fights like this in succession. Even in 2018, which wasn't that long ago, when we had a lot of activity, a lot of big, big fights, consequential fights, uh, that was one or two a month on average for about three or four months. And you're getting campaign scale fights every few days. And that has never been seen in EVE Online. By the way, if you want to learn about EVE Online's history, there's a great book called Empires of EVE. And it takes you from the origins of EVE Online when it started, where those players came from what other games they've migrated from uh, into Eve. Uh, it talks about their early empires that they built and some of the early strategies and some of the early environment. And it's funny because if you're playing Eve Echoes, you'll recognize a lot of that blank slate 
uh, discovery going on in Echoes right now, you'll see that that happened in 2003 through 2007 or 8 in EVE Online. So that's uh, Empires of Eve, written by Andrew Groen. And in addition to that, the new volume, volume two, is coming out this week for people who had invested in the project through Kickstarter. It'll be out in November for everybody else, for the public. But that takes you from 2009 to 2014. And you can see a lot of stuff there that links to what's going on today. A lot of the leadership was um, getting experience at that time. And a lot of tactics were uh, being deployed. You can see some of the echoes of all that in current EVE Online. So that is you can see uh, Empires of EVE, Volume 1 and Volume 2. You online. should check so those out. That is volume 2 will be out in November Empires for the general public. One. And volume two, you should check those out. This is amazing. Volume what you're seeing is we haven't seen this public. sort of thing ever two, either. And that's just something I'm going to be saying amazing. over and over again. What you're seeing again. is we um, haven't seen. But they are completely encapsulating this keep star in defensive bubbles. They look like bees, don't they? It's kind yeah. of drones. There is very few spots where there is not a bubble currently. And every time we find one, another one's come up. Now, this would be a very interesting tactic to prevent the carriers and dreadnoughts from having an easy warp point. So we saw in the last fight, carriers were warping down to the Keepstar at about 500 kilometers. And with these bubbles, the carriers will really struggle to find those points. It will still be possible, however, they will have to have extreme caution when doing so. Uh, this is okay. So this is a diff what I've liked about these battles, and this is something that Lise pointed out was, um, you're seeing the best military minds in Eve Online. <laughs> nice, you got into there. <laughs> you're seeing the best military minds of Eve Online at this scale colliding on both sides. You have very seasoned commanders, and the tactics that we've seen are evolving every single battle. There is no formula found that just works. Uh, there is fine tuning constantly to something that works pretty well and a lot of new inventive techniques. And the bills, oh my God, the uh, amount of damage that's being done is off the scales compared to typical. It's almost normalized now that these are um, multiple hundreds of billions in damage, whereas uh, before a 40 to 80 billion fight was a big deal. So another fixture of our coverage is Razori here. He just jumped into channel with us. He'll be with us for this fight, taking pictures and doing more than taking pictures, really just uh, illustrating the art of this fight in ways that are uh, so beautiful. And we'll be putting those up live and he'll be hanging out with us. How are you doing, Razorian? Hi, I'm good, thanks. How are you? Doing good. Let me turn you up a little. Cool. Thanks for having me on. Of course, uh, you're part of our part of our little family here. Uh, this one's going to be a huge one. It could be just like it was a couple of days ago. I'm losing track of the days. Let's go back in time and actually look at those. I'm going to just go back and tell you that on. Yeah, I guess let's just start at uh, October 11th. The uh, Battle of 319 was 4,500 players. We're going to call it players, even though it's ships, because some players never even make it to the battlefield. Um, so even though somebody sh um, might have two or three alts, uh, some players never get in. So we'll just call it players. And then on... October 13th, uh, you had SVMK. That was a really good brawl with Ferox's. Uh, God, if you, if you haven't seen that video, that's really worth seeing because it shows up close, like some of the, some of the dog fighting that's been going on. I'll get you a link now and put it inside of chat. Had a lot of fun uh, watching that one. That happened deep US time zone, so it was uh, only 
only 600 people fighting it out. Somebody in chat asked if uh, you'd be willing to kind of give an overview as to what's happening and why. Yeah, we will. I'm doing the background right now of like oh, okay. before, and then we'll get to this one. Believe me, we have plenty of time. We'll get you caught up before this fight starts. Um, and then, so that was only 900 players. That that feels like a small fight. It was 90 billion, and uh, only 900 players. Uh, they went at it only for 45 minutes, but it was a very invigorating fight. So I just put that in there. Uh, check that out. And then the Battle of YZ9. We've been here before. This was not over. Uh, Keepstar was over a Fortazar defense. And that was um, on October 15th. That had 3,400 players on it. And that was an amazing fight. Again, because the object of the fight wasn't a Keepstar. It was uh, a, a natural defense of Fortazar. It meant different tactics. So what we saw was a lot of play and counterplay and constant escalation up to the point where uh, Imperium dropped their supercarrier fleet. And uh, and in answer to that, in, in Pappy dropped their supercarrier fleet. And in answer to that, Imperium dropped 20 Titans and surrounded uh, the Pappy uh, supercarrier fleet and tried to boson it off the field. Uh, it was an interesting tactic. We've seen that sort of thing before, not at that scale, of course. In X-47, where Killer B had three Titans trying to boson a carrier fleet, and they missed. And uh, we've also seen bosons of subcap fleets, and uh, they have missed there too. Uh, so this boson trap was much bigger than anything we've ever seen. Uh, the only thing comparable to it is on the Serenity server, we've seen Lance Doomsday uh, coordinated strikes that uh, create the same kind of um, effect. Uh, and what that is, is you surround a target and you all shoot from different directions, getting full coverage and doing uh, damage to an area rather than just one ship. Uh, so when you do it with a Lance, it's a much smaller scope. It's like a tunnel. When you do it with a boson, it's a, it's a big uh, cone shape, but uh, they do different damages and have different range. So whereas the Chinese uh, players on Serenity were able to do it with lances, uh, we try to do it here on Tranquility with uh, bosons to give it even a broader area uh, with more Titans firing and being coordinated at the same time. It didn't work. We looked at the video and some some bosons missed. I think two were aimed in the wrong directions. Uh, some might have been out of range. There wasn't the good overlap that you need in order to apply damage to all the ships in the area. But it doesn't take away from the planning that was in, used to make that even happen. The practice on the test server, there was a great post by Asher Elias on Reddit. And you can read about how they tried to do this uh, strike. Uh, but it didn't work. There was also some talk about the server not being able to keep up with the damage ticks. Uh, and we don't know. CCP hasn't really said much about that, if that was actually the case. But that was uh, just a few days ago on October 15th. And then on October, on October 17th, we had... 5,400 players fighting it out in 319 TAC 3D. And that was uh, just a few days ago. Another 10 hour fight. Yeah, 11, hour 11 hours of coverage. That cost the Imperium. There at the end, it got very exciting because the Keepstar almost repaired. It really almost repaired. Um, but that cost one point. What was the bill on that? 1.2? Yeah, 1.2 trillion. These fights are just off the charts in scale. And we're about to see another one. Uh, Sully, are you here? Good. I am. Uh, we're currently looking through Resorian's pictures from the last few fights. So Great. Every few seconds I've been changing the uh, stream over it. And let's say today is there's so much changed in tactics for Pappy's side. I imagine Imperium may have predicted some of these changes, but we'll have to see. Um We'll quickly get back to the stream shortly. I just want to get through these last photos. But I can sure. tell you that Imperium Supers... Uh, sorry, Pappy Supers are on field. Wow, okay. So Pappy jumped in. Uh, 
So this is going to be another one of these massive fights. This Again, we've been through this now for a couple of weeks, most intensely in the last week. Uh, these fights are huge, historic, in rapid succession. And really, uh, the Imperium has do, do, been doing an amazing job of defeating keep stars that are being put on their territory. Um, this is going to be the fifth one. So they've already destroyed four. At the same time, it's costing them a lot to do it. And we saw that Razor, sorry, um, Initiative for the first time has shown that they're going to start paying SRP uh, ship replacement money, basically. So if you die in a ship, you get money back or you get a ship back so that you can continue to participate. We've seen that go down for them to 50% what it was before or up to 50% of what it was before. There's some that are 25%. Uh, so it's it's starting to show that it's working, this uh, constrictive um, technique of basically bleeding the Imperium, at least as far as the initiative is concerned. There's some signs there that uh, they're having trouble funding their um, the reimbursements of ships. That is a major sign of that is a major sign for Pappy that something is amiss in the I don't know the pocketbook of the Imperium. We'll say because again uh, we're talking about multiple trillions, uh, four or five or six. I forget trillion what we're at now. It's a huge amount of treasure it takes to to defeat these keep stars and i think that's part of the strategy that pappy's trying to do which is uh not put down three keep stars at the same time if they wanted to have a keep star they might try that but instead what they're doing is using these as excuses to drain money and resources and uh maybe even lowering morale of their opponents of the imperium on the other hand, the Imperium might see these opportunities as rallying points uh, because you've seen their numbers climb significantly from earlier in the war when they weren't that interested. So, yeah. So we'll see what's going on. Okay, I'm going to take off for a while. Sully's going to take over and he's going to preview the fight for you about what's going to happen today and what this new technique is that we're looking at. Good luck. We'll see you guys in a bit. Thanks, Metal. So, yeah. Uh, at the moment, this grid is vastly different than the previous keep stars. Um, most notably is that there is no safe passage into the center of this keep star. There is not a single clear spot that I can see. If there is, they are also then being dragged through the keep star to the other one, uh, to the other side. So, in, uh, Pappy have really figured out a good solid way of defending this Imperium I would be interested interested to see what their tactic will be to um, clear out these bubbles and make it so they can get their um, fleets on grid safely currently local in YZ9 is at 3400 as you can see there just hit, about to hit that could you uh, could you maybe um... I guess theorize as to why, or maybe give credence as to why the uh, they put so many bubbles on field. Um, so we've seen previously dreadnoughts warping in from a safe position to 300 kilometers away from the dreadnought. Uh, sorry, 300 kilometers away from the keep star up to, so it allows the dreadnoughts maximum range as well as um, keeping it so the titans that end up getting fielded or super carriers will have trouble hitting them. Uh, because of the range and travel time for things like fighters um, as well as we saw in the last keep star they was using carrier fighters warping them down at 500 kilometers launching them bouncing back up to 3000 kilometers um, or 1100 kilometers within their uh, network sensory lock range however it meant that their carriers didn't have as much travel time here it would be incredibly difficult for carriers to do so just from the fact that these bubbles will be catching them as they go down. So it will be dragging them in into the awaiting arms of many of the interceptors and uh, Hecates and Jackdaw pilots that are waiting here. So we are seeing more and more supers as well jumping in. What's local count at right now? Local count is just past 3,500. Uh, 
So we're seeing here pandemic horde um, and winter co kind of super super carrier fleet is entering grid in the center. We also have down here test lines with their super fleet waiting and ready. And we still have 16 minutes left of the invulnerability for this timer. Are we on, uh, what's the current time time dilation at right now? Current tide is maximum. Um, in fact, we are seeing the first Imperium fleet survive. There is a Ferox fleet from Goonswarm. By, well, by a fleet, I mean six. <laughs> six uh, there's not a full fleet here. I'm wondering if this is a miswarp or if they are if they are more caught in warp. We are seeing tie dye at eleven percent, so it's not currently maximum, but it will be very shortly. I wonder if they're trying to quickly uh if they're gonna use these as uh, skirmishes to try to quickly knock these bubbles off. Yeah, that could be um a tactic um to see about popping these bubbles. These are large T2 bubbles, so they do have an incredible amount of health. Um, up on stream, I'll show you. Oh, yeah, then I don't think those Ferroxes are going to be able to blap them in time, then. Yeah, they have, uh, what's that, 264,000 hit points. Yep. Um, per bubble, and there is a lot on this grid, so... Bubble can bubbles be repped? They can indeed be repped as well. So these bubbles uh, may even be getting lodgy um, from the surrounding sub capitals. I don't think there are any capitals in range, but. What burst seeing... projectors are being fired there at them? These are just warp disruption uh, burst projectors. So if they were happening to get out of these bubbles, because they are on the edges, it would prevent them from being able to warp. We are seeing some gotcha. micro jump drive effects going off, but I'm unsure if they will get out successfully. We are seeing more Felxes warping in at range, so this could well have been a miss warp as well. Let's hide some of these brackets, there is a lot on grid here. But here is the Imperium only uh, view. You see that there is a Ferox fleet coming into the side, whilst there is a small Ferox fleet over there on the top still. Tide Eye has now hit 10%, so its likelihood is uh, this will end up sticking around with this 10% Tide Eye. So currently I can uh, confirm that local count in 1DQ is sat at around 1300 pilots. In 8QT we are currently sat at 1800 pilots. And in system is 3850-ish. There is now disparity between my characters in system. Sully, um, looks like chat is asking if there's any way that you can uh, fix the resolution issue uh, a lot of people i guess are trying to either cast streams or having issues with uh, the resolution when it's current state so this is i think it's with the stream not with the uh not with the game itself unfortunately i can't change any uh resolution with the stream i, I believe i should be streaming it as source so okay it may have a difference because i've just Changed it so it's streaming at the correct amount, but I'll double check see if there's anything I can do. See if this has any impact.
for it. There's not much you can do about it, I don't think. Some people are saying that stream encoding is handled by Twitch, so this is probably a Twitch issue. Yeah, I, unfortunately I don't think there is much I can do. Yeah, it's just kind of... I wonder if I hang out now. Let me just... The stream may jitter a slight amount, because I'm just having to resize the windows. I'm still around. I'll see if I can fix the Twitch thing. I'm not sure what I'm looking for, though. Somebody says you'll have to change the encoder, i.e. Streamlabs, and restart the stream. I don't know if that's uh, going to be the fix or not. Uh, we'll ask McLeod, but I haven't heard of that. So what's happening here? There seems to be... So we are seeing... Uh... An Imperium Maven fleet is slowly entering field. We currently still have the uh, Imperium Ferox fleet as well, sat off to the side. The Keepstar still has 10 minutes on their anchoring timer, so this timer is not affected by tie dye at all, and is counting down. But we are also seeing that these uh, ships are spreading out differently than previous. Um, on the previous fights, the Ravens were in a ball around the structure. At the moment, they are still gathering, trying to find positions. So we'll currently sit on the uh, Imperium only view for a little while whilst we wait and see what they are um, preparing to do. We are still see um, we are obviously seeing Pappy forces are bringing in capital ships throughout the uh, area. They have sp actually spread them quite um, around on these bubbles. So there is not one central group of dreadnoughts. They are very well spread. As you can see here, here are all the Happy for uh, capital forces. And uh, Loco is just hitting um, five, uh, hitting four thousand at the moment. So uh, in chat, uh, Gutter Rain just uh, stated that uh, it, we did state last stream that it was um, not extremely feasible to cover the Keep Star in bubbles. However, test lights have been, uh, test lights of Pappy have been very well plan planning out as well as getting bookmarks. So it seems like they have done something very impressive, which is cover this entire grid in keep bubbles. It w this would not work on any offensive to stop things jumping out because you cannot anchor within the keep stars range. But these are, um, I believe, these are all T two bubbles. Yeah, so I can confirm these are all large T two bubbles. I can indeed blue the Aeon. As as is typical with every fight, there are more and more groups that are coming in in various different ships. So 
So here we could be seeing the very important ship of the hour, which is this Rooker could have the quantum core needed for this keep star to begin onlining. We do see, also see Goonswarm Sinos are currently lit on their Athenorsian system. So that is how Goonswarm are bridging into this fight. So we are beginning to see some of the ravens are moving around into areas on the keep star, but they are quickly being hunted down by these interceptors all around. So um, Lord Alex says about a Titan AoE, all the Titan's AoE damage is only a short range. It could um, clear out a line of them if they used, say for example, a Lance, if it um, applies enough for the signature. However, it's a very um, expensive way of clearing these bubbles. We, we are over 4,000 in local, so hopefully um, short, oh, hopefully in a few moments we'll begin to see fighting because as this timer comes out, it will then be possible for the damage to be applied to the Keepstar. We are also seeing a mobile Sino inhibitor from Pandemic Horde activate on one side of the Keepstar. So what that module does for chat is it stops any Sinos being activated within 100 kilometers of the Keepstar. So that means on that side there won't be any Sinos within 100 kilometers. 100 kilometers on this grid unfortunately is very small um, especially when you get out to that distance but we are seeing more and more ravens landing in they are managing to avoid the bubbles and they are just spreading out further and further Why do you think they put that Sino in head down? I'm not sure if there was any specific um, tactic involved in putting the Sino in hip down. It may have just been a deterrent so they can't open Sinos on that um, part of the grid, thus forcing things 
onto a specific part. So it's almost like a, a funnel, so to speak. Yeah, we are seeing a second one going down, so they may be doing it so there isn't any way for them to quickly Sino in capitals. But these uh, Sino jammers do have limited health. Um, they have less than the T2 bubbles. They are yeah, they die rather quickly. 70,000 hit points. I would assume it was uh, to keep the dreads from being able to uh, drop in around the grid. Mm. Right, so if they need a dread to pause it to dr jump in, these sign on hips may stop that. Uh, yeah, so they're they're trying to keep as much damage off this keep star as possible. Looks like so the only uh, good. The only tricky part is that is with this grid so large. So from the center point of the keep star, I have um, my main in the middle of this keep star. It is four hundred kilometers to the sign on hip. Right, it's a huge grid. Uh, but this, like you said, this will funnel the uh, dreads and sinos to certain positions. Because what's the uh, was a hundred uh, km range on those sino inhibs? I believe. Anybody confirm that? The... Yeah, it is a it's a hundred kilometer uh, bubble around the sino inhib. We are seeing Pandemic Horde Titans entering the grid as well. They're currently at the top. I will get a view in on those. We also do have some NC Titans. So we are now seeing the keep start is inside an onlining phase. So currently we are waiting for the raw call pilot that we saw earlier, if he was the one carrying the core, to dock into the structure, take control, and then install the core. What would be what would be the point of uh, committing this many uh, titans to the grid um, in this stage of the game? It almost seems relatively unnecessary in a large respect i believe it um, could be to ensure that once they are on grid and loaded it's to prevent um anything going wrong during loan like loading we saw yesterday um one of my titans yesterday in fact never loaded grid so getting them in early allows them to have grid loaded to be able to respond to any immediate threats yeah, we had, um, remember Vili was discussing that earlier this week, uh, essentially during the Boson fight, uh, the reason why they committed all of their Titans as quickly as they did was to uh, ensure that they had um, essentially tie-dye supremacy, right? Uh, because at that point in time, uh, if you don't, load grid with a certain amount of time you can't you can't online your hardeners there's a possibility that you won't be able to online your tank mods and you end up being a sitting duck 
So we are now can't. seeing the timer is indeed counting down. Core is in. The core has been installed. Seems a uh, test were able to get that core installed pretty quick. Yeah, that was a very quick um, install. We saw previously the Keepstar's health was at 78% uh, by the time the core got installed. Of course, with all these bubbles, it might be preventing uh, the damage to go into it uh, like last time, but that seemed really quick under Tida. He must have, uh, as soon as that was uh, online, he must have dropped the core in. Hmm. He would have been ready on the ball and waiting. We are seeing a lot less server calls um, and delay for server calls at the moment. I'm surprised I haven't seen a fleet here. Hasn't paused yet. This is, uh, timer's ticking down pretty quick here. Yeah, so this is the current Imperium forces on grid. Well, if they're going to do something, they better do it soon here. Because this is going to tick away quickly. So for those of you watching, uh, one of the uh, mechanics of fighting these structure grids is that the, um, the timer, the timers for structures do not follow uh, normal uh, time dilation rules. So if you see, uh, you'll see actually here that the uh, timer is actually ticking down in real time, uh, which means that they are losing precious seconds. Uh, so right now we're at what, 10% time dilation? Correct. So tie-dye is yeah. maxed out at 10%. The calls for the server are taking roughly 30 seconds to a minute, which is a lot less than yesterday. Yeah. So, I I don't not, I'm I not quite un, quite, don't quite understand why because uh, in one DQ they had a time dilation because there was a mass uh, they had a, a quick time die uh, issue because there was a mass purchase of uh, the contracts that were up for all of the ships. So uh, I I'm wondering why nothing has happened yet. Uh, better happen quick, like we were alluding to. The um, keep starts going to count down a lot faster than uh, what's uh, the tie dye, yeah. right? Yep. Yep. So we are seeing the cloaks uh, coming in through um, retributions as well as bombers are warping into grid, getting into positions. So we are seeing some bombs go out towards the keep star in an effort to try and pause the timer. So the uh, the keep star timer or structure timer is based on a server call of the total damage that gets put out. Uh, so for um, correct me if I'm wrong here, I believe it's every uh, five seconds, every four or five seconds. Um, and excuse me if I'm wrong, Chad, uh, but every, I believe it's every four to five seconds, you, uh, it adds up the total damage done. Um, and if it's met the threshold, then a pause it. So that's one of the reasons why they're lobbing bombs instead of um, uh, using full DPS.
Yeah, so we have just ticked below the 10 minute mark. Um, Imperium forces currently on grid is not enough to store this, um, stop this timer. They need a large amount more on grid to stop this timer. What is the, the what is the DPS threshold that needs to be met so, in order to pause a keep star? Yeah, to pause the keep star, um, it needs to be seventy five hundred DPS after the resistances, which are about twenty uh, twenty percent. So it's nine thousand seven hundred odd, um, which is very it's very odd numbers. Uh, everyone kind of rounds up to ten thousand. Um, needs to be applied and I believe it is every five or ten seconds that it is checked um, whether the damage has been reached um, of that little leeway so we are still waiting to see it pause even once but here we have the entire grid um, excuse the neutrals because they are just another group that have not been added I'll try and add them now What is the strategic importance of this uh, particular keep star getting anchored? So with this keep star, it gives them a lot more range into delve as well as it also allows them the direct Titan range from one DQ, which means that Goon Swarm will be uh, um, put under um, more pressure from the at attacking forces because we have we'll, there will be more access to Delve systems. So there'll be more systems in range rather than 8QT, which only has, uh, I believe, six or seven systems in Delve in range, not including the NPCs. Whereas after this, it will be around 75%. So just to confirm, you said that uh, if this Keepstar angers, that uh, a 1DQ would be within um, range of a uh, Titan jump or Titan bridge. I do believe so. I will quickly double check just to make sure. I can yeah, confirm, yeah, of... it is definitely in range. Well, we have a new group of Titans coming in. Uh, we do indeed. These are fraternity Titans are landing in now. There's like currently the no uh, Imperium Capitals on grid. This is quite the show of force from this coalition. Hmm. Well, I, th I think the bubbles are the most impressive thing here. Yeah, the bubbles. I think this looks like somebody was had been doing bubbles for hours. It's important to have the bubbles on the Keepstar grid too, because Keepstar grids are the largest zero bubble grids. And essentially what that means is that uh, the each structure has a, uh, a zero from where you undock all the way out to um, the surrounding ring. So essentially what that means is that the enemy can force project their uh, fleet much easier than the defenders can. So, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but the Keepstar bubble, I believe it's 300 kilometers from uh, undock to zero. So, essentially, I know for a fact that a Fortizar bubble is um, 150 kilometers. Um, so for from uh, all the way across in 75 kilometers radius. Uh, so essentially what you would have to have is a fleet that's capable of force projecting their damage uh, to that range on the undock. If in fact they did sit on the undock. What is our timer currently sitting at? Uh, timer is currently at full... Four minutes and 40 seconds. Uh, 
I'm going to go on a limb here and say that uh, it looks like that they're not going to contest this. It's beginning to feel that way for sure. Uh... Yeah, it's it's a very... So the moment the timer gets paused, it really does um, allow the Imperium time to stop and think. However, it's still... From what is coming on grid, it looks to be a significant way off of being paused. I say time is now below four minutes. I think we're all expecting uh, an attempt to stop this one as well from the Imperium. But yeah, I was. Yeah, as it looks now, it's not happening. Uh, maybe the bubbles kind of threw a wrench in their plans and they didn't have time to adapt. Uh, yeah, I, I wonder if this was a. I wonder if this was just a great big. Uh, like wrench and their ideas and plans on how their how things are going to get set up. I do believe it could be. It's a very interesting time. So we have two minutes forty three left. So what's this mean for the Imperium uh, if Pappy forces are able to anchor this today? Uh, what threat does this pose to them? I think it just proposes... So, a large amount of Delve is still out of range of 8QT. It still has safety from that um, immediate threat. However, with this Keep Star, it, it puts that safety at risk. Um, it provides capitals, safe space. Um, I know pa Pandemic Horde have also been doing um, dread bombs into the space and things like that, so... I'm beginning to wonder if I will even load grid before this timer ends. I'm currently in the jump tunnel with my ships. And maybe the uh, Imperium uh, just didn't get on grid quick enough, right? <laughs> they might, might have waited a little bit too long to get started on top of the bubbles. And with the bubbles, it didn't give them time to like said, adapt uh, with the tie-dye. I mean, these, these bubbles, they should have... Uh been paying attention to these bubbles for quite some time uh if they saw that they were anchoring these bubbles um you know i unless they had um like 400 people anchoring these bubbles i don't see how they wouldn't been able to adapt this and we've seen this before in keep star fights where they've put up bubble walls um, i don't think i've ever seen a bubble wrap stru structure in this fight before but um yeah, I don't, uh, I don't quite, uh, I yeah, don't quite see it happen, or, uh, throwing that much of a wrench. Especially a keep star. That's a huge grid as you were uh, talking, yep. to, talking about earlier. Um, so for those yeah. um, with a keen eye, you'll see that that is Anna that has this landed in. Um, we saw her in the last stream and the keep star has thir less than 30 seconds. This may be a really short stream. Yeah, this yeah, it looks like it. Really taken, taken me by surprise. Both sides were fully preparing for this battle, and it seems like just as my second Titan loads in, the Keepstar has finished. It is currently repaired and anchored. Okay. Keepstar is online. Wow. Fortress, Fortress Delve has been breached. Yep, Fortress Delve has been breached. 1DQ is now within jump range of 
Pappy. Now this is the fifth attempt to drop a keep star. Uh, yeah, it's, it's surprising they uh, exhausted so much resources on the first four, yeah, and then not uh, uh, seems not even attempted to, to to even pause this one. Um, I will, from the outside looking in, and from kind of more of a strategic standpoint, I think that um, the. I honestly think that uh, Imperium might be looking at it from a financial standpoint because we have heard rumors that, uh, you know, um, I believe, gosh, who was it that reduced their uh, their SRP by 50%? Initiative. Um, have on initiative. Some yeah, so we are, we've heard rumors that Initiative has reduced their SRP by 50%. Um, you know, and they have, uh, Goons have had a, taken a wallop uh you know for their resources just to try to keep these keep stars from anchoring um yeah. so i i genuinely believe that uh they're probably looking at this from a financial standpoint they're like wow okay we really need to actually look at uh what we need in order to set up defensive measures around structures because structures are generally easier to defend than they are to um destroy uh so yeah well the defense the defensive structures uh the imperium kind of you know get to have that fight on their terms uh instead of on the, the pappy's terms but yep. all that being said uh imperium are fighting heavily outnumbered uh it's pretty much every other major coalition in the game uh fighting one coalition so yep. Yeah, so as um, you can see now in chat, it is now repairing. So what has happened is the Keepstar has taken... It, so it's fully repaired now. It is online. Um, it cannot be destroyed in one sitting now. It has to be reinforced. What happened was because the damage was ongoing, um, it has now entered another repair cycle. So it actually cannot be fit. So currently it is low power. So there is no online fit for this structure. As such, there is still a precedent to try and clear the grid because um, with this structure in low power, if Imperium wanted to contest this structure even more so, they could actually reinforce it into structure. So there is still a large amount of battleships on grid which need to be cleared off. Right, and that would take two battles to... Uh... Kill this, kill this keep star instead of one if they would have got it before it anchored. That is correct. So, so as we see, um, we will swap over camera slightly, slightly to my uh, avatar, Anna. So here we'll see that before what my Titan is currently trying to do is the lock and apply damage to these battleships, trying to force them off of the field. Well, that's it. That uh, I guess we'll have to now that um, the Pap, you know Pappy forces have um, a beachhead in order to establish themselves. Um, it'll be interesting to see uh, what happens in the coming days, weeks, and even you know months. So you know there very well may be that uh, you know we get uh, we get to see one DQ by Christmas.
Yeah, that's uh, it's definitely a possibility now. It's still going to be slow, right? They're still uh, not going to be able to assault 1DQ uh, from everything coming from the Pappy uh, High Command. Uh, they're going to be taking it slow. It's going to be, uh, you know, one probably one major structure uh, at, a, at a steady pace. So kind of still grinding down, strangling the uh, Imperium. So before they uh, attempt to attack the, uh, you know, one DQ, the uh, the actual stronghold of the of the Imperium. Yep, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Actually has something here. Um, so Matani has actually said something uh, interesting. Hey, Vili, just uh, jump in the chat. Um, fancy jumping on TIS, Vili, to let us know how your initial thought to this was. Feel, feel free to hop into the channel. Same for anyone if they want to pop onto Discord, both when we are, are streaming and are not. There's people there chatting, hanging out. I'm I'm sure Billy has uh noisy comps. I, they might be quiet, who knows. So it looks like Matani is frustrated at the bubbles surrounding the um surrounding the keep star. So this was um Matterall actually posted this in back channel here and wasn't paying attention. Um so this is a direct quote uh from Matani. It says, okay, dudes, if it's legal to put 300 plus bubbles up on a keep grid and crash the attacker when they're trying to load grid, we'll do it on all of our keep stars going forward. Yeah, so that's an interesting take because it's very, it's not one sided um, grid loading. So for those that aren't aware, grids load for the aim for everyone so if a character warps in it will load the same as if it's a defender or attacker so it's yeah an interesting one there what's the uh, timer look like now so we well, the timer is yeah, we have seven minutes on the repair, um, and hopefully we are able to clear the damage off so they can then begin to fit modules onto this keep star. Because that is ultimately what this next goal is, to begin fitting stuff to the keep star to allow it um, the ability to defend itself. And uh, Sully is definitely uh, with the Pappy forces. I am indeed. So, um, any, any bias there? Uh, I, I will be definitely. fully transparent. Yeah, I um, am... I am um, attacking this, uh, attacking into Delve, defending this keep star. So Matani specifically says, um, if you know, if we were going to lose one of these uh, keep star con contests, uh, he wants, he doesn't want it, it. He didn't want it to be a fourteen-hour grind. So that was uh, that was his reasoning behind it. Uh, was he didn't want it to be, you know unable to load grid um, and, uh, you know, be 14 hour, so 14 hour slugfest and, you know, 3 a.m. Eastern time, unable to fight it. Um, so I mean, he's, he's directly said, uh, quote, if CCP doesn't do anything, we will put 300 bubbles on our keep grids. So he, uh, he didn't want to contest it because he was, uh, there's, I guess, People believe well, that uh, you weren't going to be able to load grid. Well, he, uh, the Imperium actually, uh, in Fountain, um, YTAC 2, I believe, uh, kind of tried this maneuver when they walled the entire back of the Keepstar. Uh, yep. And their defense. So they kind of did uh, take the first step in this tactic here, really. Uh, it looks like Pappy Force is just, you know, 
turned it up a level, right? Yeah, we we've seen this before, right? Yeah, so this is there wasn't it wasn't to nearly this level that uh, Pappy currently has it, but we we definitely did see a couple of keep star fights um, during the uh, floodplains of uh, excuse me, it, it sucks escaping me now. Um, where did uh, initiative retreat from? Fountain. Fountain. Thank you. Yeah, flood pains. Fountain. Um, the you know we did see on a couple of occasions they would put walls of bubbles up in order to try to catch people. So Pappy just took it one step further and uh, bubbled their entire keep star. Yeah, this isn't the first time as well we've seen keep star bubbled. Um, as um, Lance Gnold, I believe that would be, or Lannis Gnold. Um, this did happen in CO2 with cyano inhibitors as well, um, back when CO2 was around in the north. So this isn't the first time a Keepstar has had a significant amount of bubbles on it, but I believe this is the first time it has been fully surrounded. Yep. But these weren't also small bubbles. These were um, the larger ones. So these were the biggest bubbles possible. Kind of have to use the large ones. Too. Yeah, these were the Tech Two largest. How big are they? They're forty kilometers bit uh, wide, right? I will double check. I do believe they are. They are. They have a warp disruption range of forty kilometers. So they, in terms of the diameter of the bubble, is eighty kilometers. Right. So you you kind of you kind of. Like you were saying earlier, again, ready to say you kind of have to have them because of how humongous the uh, uh, keep star grid is. But yeah, just uh, just for uh, clarification purposes, this is not the first time. Um, bubbles have been deployed on a large scale in order to defend a structure grid. Um, you know, this, it has been, uh, anchorable bubbles have been a thing that people have used in order to uh, grab drags and get people, uh, you know, in order to try to catch people who aren't paying attention or are doing dumb things. Um, but, you know, this is probably the first time in years that I have seen a fully bubble wrapped structure. Yeah, I, I don't think uh, CCP is going to do anything about this tactic. Uh, no, this is it's it's a hundred percent, you know, emergent gameplay design. I highly, highly doubt CCP would uh, get involved with uh, something like this. I will try and see if I can get a D scan of the grid so we know how many bubbles were actually anchored. So I'll try and see if I can do that on one of the alts. Now these are going to have to be cleared once this thing anchors. So, so these bubbles of... can be unanchored, and I believe yeah. they already started this process. Yeah, you can unanchor these, but that's a lot of uh, bubbles to unanchor. So just to, uh, somebody asked in chat if we could show the timers. The um, Just so you're aware, the structure has been anchored. Uh, there was damage, leftover damage on top of the keep star uh, that rolled over. And so the damage ticker is currently ticking down uh, for repair. Um, and it will go into repair cycle. It'll probably go into a second repair cycle just because uh, there are still people shooting at it and still battleships to be blown up. But right now, it's pretty decisive that uh, Pappy has won the grid and uh, Matani has uh, called a called off the skirmish to uh, attack this Keep Star. So right now. Uh, the Pappy forces are just going to clean up all the battleships on grid, and uh, they're going to call it, you know, this is most definitely a decisive victory for uh, Pappy forces. Yeah. The so, Citadel has been anchored, and uh, they're good to go. In a D-scan of chat, um, does include the bubbles, and on D-scan, 
for maximum range is 144 large T2 bubbles. That's a lot. Uh, there's actually a really good presentation uh, that the leader of uh, Boss Alliance or Star Frontiers uh, gave uh, at uh, FanFest one year, or E-Fest one year, uh, just going over how, like, all, any alliance worth its name has lost Sov and got it back. So even uh, if the Imperium end up losing this war, um, they're going to be just fine. Uh, they've lost Saw before. It's not the end of the world. Uh, like uh, everybody uh, gets evicted from time to time. This is Eve. This is what makes it fun. So, uh, just uh, side note there. But that's a good uh, presentation to watch. It, it, he kind of goes over uh, what it takes to be an alliance leader at at kind of this level and and higher or or below, right? Yeah, that is correct. So currently people are saying we are just trying to clear the battleships off of the grid. This will allow the Keepstar to be fit. It has just gone through its next repair cycle. I will try and get info on it and I am seeing here that it has been fit. So the Keepstar is now online and powered. Now, what timer is being hit now? So currently there is isn't is there is now a timer um, as another bit of damage has come in. But as you can see, it no longer states low power. Right. So this keep star so... is now um, in a high powered state, which means it will require three reinforcements. So they're hitting the so, shield so timer three phases right of attacks and two reinforcement cycles. So right now the timer is on the shield timer. That is correct. So this keep star is fully online. So we've just had this command given. So as you can see here, I am now locking up bubbles. The command was given for us to engage and destroy them because the pilots who anchored them don't want to unanchor them. That was my thought. That I would, I definitely think that would be the. Of course, these Tech Twos have <laughs> quite a bit of HP, right? I mean, these large uh, bubbles have quite a lot of uh, HP. Yes, that is correct. And you have to have anchoring trained to level five, I believe. So there's probably not a ton of pilots that have that as well. So there's probably just a handful of pilots that can actually anchor these <laughs> or unanchor them. So this is definitely the better better option I have a very odd glitch going on my second Titan at the moment. I am apparently taking uh -oh. all all sort of forms of uh, fire on, so it's a, just a graphical glitch. But there is currently sparks flying from that ship. I will swap over to it now, so chat can have a a view of this appreciation. So this is currently what I am looking at.
So yeah, this is currently the uh, Disco Jam, so I'll swap back off because it isn't a good idea. Oh, there we are. It does have of a, a less of an impact there. So we've had uh, Gorin link some uh, jump range maps uh, from this Keepstar. Uh, I don't know if you want to kind of show those, if you could. Yeah, I am just loading up as we speak some of Azorian's pictures. Oh, sweet. Nice. We are currently in a cleanup state right now for the Pappy Forces. Uh, they're clearing the grid of their bubbles. Keepstar has anchored. Uh, Fortress okay. Delve has been breached. So here we are looking at some of Azorian's pictures throughout this fight. Um, I'm unsure if he'll be happy or sad that this is a very short fight. Um, we'll have to get his word for that. But let's say we've got beautiful pictures as always coming through. Yeah, a bit of mixed feelings on that one. It's a shame that it was so short. It's, uh, it's not a lot of pictures, but uh, all these bubbles actually make it uh, quite difficult to uh, to capture. It makes for very busy backgrounds. Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately the bubbles do provide just that kind of white out that you would be seeing, so it's kind of difficult really. But you've still done an amazing job with a very difficult onset, that's for sure. So I believe um, with this just being a clean up now exercise for these bubbles, they, all the capitals here do have a safe keep star to dock in, um, even though it still has a timer going on, it is completely safe, they can dock and the keep star is also now fit with a module so that it will be over a period of a minimum of four days for this keep star to be killed. So I believe we're going to finish the stream there, it's been the shortest ever keep star battle stream um absolutely yeah it's uh we were expecting much longer battle 
Uh huh. But it looks like everything is kind of uh, Pappy forces have wrapped yeah. everything up. Keep charge online. So please do feel free to jump onto our Discord um, and hang out in there. We do have regular podcasts and things, as well as we are just there to have a hang out and chat. I'm there quite regularly. Um, big thank you for Manuska and Vazorian for joining me today. And um, please do go and check out Vazorian's Flickr um, to see these uh, pictures, as well as even more beautiful Eve pictures. Thank you very much for tuning in, everyone. And hopefully we'll see you at the next Keepstar engagement. For sure.